Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's look at the new features for the iPad in iOS 4.2. So Apple released iOS 4.2 last week. This update brings a lot of features to the iPad that have already been on the iPhone for a little while, plus some new ones. Let's take a look. Arguably the biggest feature of iOS 4.2 is multitasking. So as you run different apps on your iPad, they remain running. They don't take up much battery life or memory space. They kind of go into a hibernation state when you're not using them. To see what apps are running, double tap the button at the bottom, the home button, and you get all of your apps listed here. And you can zoom back and forth, left and right, uh, to see which ones are running. And you can jump to any one that you want simply by touching it. Now if you want to completely quit an app so it isn't running in the background, double tap to go and look at the ones that are running and touch and hold any one of those. And they'll all start to shake. You can still move back and forth but you can quit one by simply pressing the red minus button at the upper left hand corner. Another big feature of iOS 4.2 is app folders. So you can see I've got all these icons are app folders. They contain a whole bunch of different apps. I touch one and it will show me which apps are inside the folder. To create an app folder, all you need to do is tap and hold over an app so everything is jiggling. Then drag one app to another app. It will create an app folder and it will name it based on the category of the two apps. So for instance, both of these are games, so it instantly gives me the name games. I can tap in here and change that name if I want to. You can also add an app to an existing folder by tapping until everything jiggles and then simply dragging it into the app folder. Likewise, you can go into an app folder and then drag something out of it. There are a lot of improvements to mail as well. There's a unified inbox so if you have more than one account you can now view all your incoming messages in one place. You can also view conversations in a threaded format as well. Plus, if you're an Exchange user, you can now have more than one Exchange account. My favorite feature though is the ability to open up attachments in third-party apps. One tricky little change is the switch on the side of the iPad right up here is no longer the orientation lock. It's a mute switch just like on the iPhone. But you can still lock the orientation of the iPhone. Just double tap to go to the multitask switcher here at the bottom. Go all the way to the left and in multitasking you've got this left area here which has always has the iPod icon there. It has volume control, brightness control, and some playback uh, buttons for the iPod app. And in addition you have the orientation lock there that you can turn on or off. Now we also have print functionality called AirPrint. Now you go to an app, say I'm in Pages here, and then you find the print functionality. In Pages it's the little wrench tool there and under Tools you click Print. Now here you select a printer a number of copies and press print. Now this only works on a few HP printers and one Epson printer right now. More printers come out, there will be more options. There might also be in the future an option to print through your Mac. Uh, so we'll have to look for that. But uh, unless you have one of those printers, this print uh, function really doesn't do much for you at the moment. In addition to Air Print, there's also Air Play. It's kind of limited too. You can view videos and audio through the new Apple TV simply by clicking on a button inside of either the iPod app or the Videos app. There are also several usability changes. For instance, uh, if you go into Notes, uh, you may not like how small the font is there. You can now change that by going into Settings and under Settings you can go to General and then Accessibility and you can turn on Large Text. And when you do that, select the size there. Now you go back and some of the default apps like Notes now display in a larger size. One of the cool new features I like is the ability to search text in Safari. So for instance of course you can click on the Google uh, box there and search for text on the web. But if you want to search on this web page you can actually just type it in here and you get your Google suggestions there at the top. But also at the bottom you have on this page there are seven matches. Click that and it will go to the first one and then you can use these buttons here at the bottom to go to each match. There are other features as well. For instance, the 99 cent TV show rentals 
from the Apple TV are now available on the iPad. And also there's the new Game Center app which ties together a lot of different third party games in a system that allows you to challenge other players and compare high scores. Things like that. So if you haven't gotten it already all you need to do is sync your iPad with your Mac or PC in iTunes. Go and check for the update and it will download and install the update for you. Hope you like this look at the new iOS 4.2 for iPad. Till next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.